Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance brings you in just a moment Casablanca, starring Victor Jory and featuring Dooley Wilson. But first, latest reports from doctors on the 14-day palm olive plan. Chicago reports better complexions for 73%. Atlanta reports better complexions for 88%. In city after city, doctors tested the 14-day palm olive plan on all types of skin. And two out of three of all women tested got better complexions in 14 days. What is this 14-day palm olive plan? Wash your face three times a day with palm olive soap. Then each time take 60 seconds more to massage palm olive's lovely soft lap onto your skin as you would a cream. Then rinse. This cleansing massage with palm olive's lather brings your skin its full beautifying effect. See what palm olive can do for your skin in 14 days. Remember, doctors prove palm olive's beauty results. and every Tuesday night, Colgate Tooth Powder brings you the Theater of Romance, featuring each week your favorite stars and favorite stories and plays especially adapted for radio. And here is your host to tell you about tonight's presentation, Casablanca, starring Victor Jory. Good evening. Casablanca has always been one of the world's great crossroads, but it was never more so than in the months right after the fall of France, when its hotels and cafes were jammed to the doors with refugees desperately killing time until they could go on to find safety in America or another free country. Our story tonight is told by a man who owned one of those cafes, Rick Blaine. Seems to me everyone in Casablanca came into my cafe that evening. The gambling rooms were crowded, the bar was packed, and every table was full. We'd had an accident during the early part of the evening. A senior Ugardi had been shot by the Gestapo. They thought they had some letters of transit that would mean passage out of Casablanca on the Clipper for two lucky people, but they didn't find them on him. The reason they didn't find them was because Senior Gardy had given them to me earlier. No one knew that for certain, although one or two suspected it. <laughs> the first person to approach me on the subject was Captain Renault, the French Prefect of Police. They're going to have a good many interesting guests here in the cafe tonight, Rick. Major Strasser of the Third Reich, for one. Yeah, I can do without him. And Victor Laszlo, for another. Laszlo? Laszlo is... Laszlo here in Casablanca? Ricky, this is the first time I've ever seen you so impressed. You know him? No, but Laszlo succeeded in impressing half the world. Hmm, yes. That is why Major Strasser is here. To see that Laszlo doesn't preach America. It'll be interesting to see how he manages his escape. He will not escape. 10,000 francs says he will. i make it 5,000. I'm only a poor, corrupt official. It's a bet. No matter how clever he is, he still needs an exit visa, or I should say two. He's traveling with a lady. Huh? Rick, there are many exit visas sold in this cafe, but we know that you have never sold them. Don't start with Victor Laszlo. Why, where would I get an exit visa to sell? There are two missing letters of transit. Senor Ugarte had them earlier this evening. But we didn't find them on his body. Do you happen to know where they might be? <laughs> Louis, are you pro Vichy or free French? Serves me right for asking a stupid question. We'll say no more about it. At the moment. I was in the roulette room when Victor Laszlo arrived. I was busy at the moment, so I didn't bother going out until I heard Sam at the piano playing a piece I'd told him never to play. Sam! Sam! What the... What are you doing playing that song? I thought I told you never to... Hello, Rick. And there she was, the woman I loved and hated more than any woman in the world, the woman I'd last seen in Paris and didn't ever want to see again. It's been a long time, Rick. Let's see. The last time we met... Was the day the Germans marched into Paris. They wore gray and you wore blue and I've hated both colors ever since. What are you doing here? I came with Victor Laszlo. Laszlo? Yes. He went over to the bar to speak to someone. He's searching for a Senor Yogati, who has something for us. Yeah? Yogati is dead. Dead? Oh, no. <laughs> Tough, isn't it? See you around, Ilta. 
And I couldn't stand there looking down at her and seeing her at one of my tables just as though she belonged there. I couldn't stand there looking at her and go on hating her, and I wanted to hate her. And late that night, after everyone had gone, I sat in the cafe thinking how much I hated her. I sat in the cafe alone with Sam and his piano and a half-empty bottle of scotch. Boss, you gonna sit here in the cafe until morning? Boss. Uh, what's that you say, Sam? Are you going to bed, boss? Not right now. I've still got half a bottle here. Are you planning on going to bed in the near future? No. You ever going to bed? No. Well, I ain't sleep either. Good. Have a drink. No, not me. Boss, let's get out of here. No, sir. I'm waiting for a lady. She's coming back. I know she's coming back. Oh, let's go somewhere, boss. There's nothing but trouble here for you. Let's take the car and drive all night. We'll go fishing. We'll stay away until she's Shut gone. Up. She... Shut up and go home. No. I'm staying right here. Of all the gin joints and all the towns in the world, she has to walk into mine. Play the piano, Sam. You know what I want to hear. No, I don't. Play it. You played it for her, you can play it for me. Okay, boss. She always wore blue. That spring in Paris, I can remember driving day after day with her out into the country, eating dinners in the little country inn. Lord, she was beautiful. And I remember dancing with her night after night after night. I never liked dancing until I met her. And I remember once when we were dancing, I said, Who are you really? What what were you before? What, what did you do? What did you think? We said no questions, Rick. Remember? Yeah. I was just wondering why I was so lucky, why I should find you waiting for me to come along, Ilsa. Why, there is no other man in my life? Yeah, I guess that's it. There was. He's dead. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. Kiss me, darling. That's all the answer we need for anything. Isn't it? Darling. Oh, my darling. It was answer enough. There were a lot of questions I wish I'd asked her later, but I had time to think about other things. I remember the last day I saw her. The Germans were expected in Paris the next day. Rick, you have to get out of Paris. The Germans must not catch you here. We have to get out of here, kid. The train leaves for Marseille at 5. I'll pick you up at the hotel at 4.30. Is it a date, kid? Well, I have so many things to do. Suppose I meet you at the station. All right. The guard they on at a quarter to five. Rick. Oh, Rick. Well, so what, what's the matter? It's such a crazy world. Anything can happen. Or Rick, kiss me. Kiss me as though... As though it were the last time. Mm. I did kiss her, as though it was the last time, and it was. Remember the note you brought me to the station, Sam? It said, Richard, I cannot go with you or ever see you again. You must not ask why. Just believe I love you. Go, my darling, and God bless you. <laughs> I learned it by heart. I learned it so I could say it backwards. Curse her rotten Two-faced little soul. I'm sorry she walked into the cafe tonight. I'm sorry I ever met her. I... Boss. There she is. Hello, Rick. Hello, Sam. Get out, Sam. I'm gone. Have a drink, Ilsa. No, not tonight. I came back because I had to talk to yeah. you. Yeah, why did you have to come to Casablanca? There were so many other places. I wouldn't have come to the cafe if I had known you were here. How long do we have, anyway, honey? How many of those happy days were there when there was no questions asked and faith was something all in one piece? You know what I remember most? I remember the wow finish. A guy standing on a train platform with a comical look on his face because his insides had been kicked out by a pair of high French eels. Can I tell you a story? Has it got a finish, honey? Has it got a twist? I don't know the finish yet. It's about a girl who met a man. Yeah, well, I've heard a lot of stories like that, kid. Just tell me one thing. Was it Laszlo you left me for, or were there others in between, or aren't you the kind that tells? Yes, I'll tell you. It was Laszlo I left you for. You see, Victor Laszlo is my husband, and was, even when I knew you in Paris. Good night, Rick. <laughs> Thank you.
In just a moment, we'll bring you the second act of Casablanca, starring Victor Jory with Dooley Wilson and Mercedes McCambridge. But first... Oh, what on earth can I give Aunt Mary for Christmas? Oh, I've racked my brains and can't think of a thing. Give her a war bond, lady. Every war bond you buy for a Christmas gift is a gift for our fighting men and an investment for the recipient. I've been trying to find an electric train for my Johnny, but there's not one to be had. Give him a war bond, mister. You'll help finance victory and make the future safe for your boy. Oh, dear, only four more Christmas shopping days, and I still have important gifts to buy. Oh, I'll bet the stores are cleaned out. Buy war bonds, lady. No shortage there. They're easy to buy, easy to mail, and they show your dear ones that you love your country as you love them. Our baby's only three months old. She's too young to enjoy a Christmas tree. Well, tie a war bond in her name to the topmost branch. Use it to start an education fund for her. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, war bonds make ideal Christmas gifts. No battling through crowds to buy them. No disappointment at not finding what you want. No letdown because the quality isn't what it used to be. So buy war bonds and stamps up to the limit. This program is presented in cooperation with the drug, cosmetic, and allied industries by the Colgate Palmolive Peat Company on behalf of the Treasury's war bond campaign. <laughs> Now, the second act of Casablanca, starring Victor Jory as Rick, with Dooley Wilson as Sam. Rick continues his story. The next day, Ilse and Victor Laszlo went every place in Casablanca trying to get two exit visas, but they didn't have a chance. Victor Laszlo was a marked man, and it was death or a concentration camp for anyone who helped him. They only had one slim hope, and that was to find the letters of transit the late Signor Agarty had had for them. Victor Laszlo came alone to the cafe that night to see me. All I want to know is, do you have those letters? Suppose I do, Laszlo. You must know that it's very important that I get out of Casablanca. It's my privilege to be one of the leaders of a great movement. I must get to America to continue my work. Well, I'm not interested in world events. I'm a saloon keeper. You were interested in world events once. You fought with the Ethiopians against Italy. And you risked your neck with the loyalists in Spain. And I was well paid on both occasions. The other side would have paid you better. That's a matter of opinion. I'll give you 100,000 francs. I wouldn't accept a million. I suggest you ask your wife why. I beg your pardon? I said, ask your wife. That night I went upstairs and Ilsa was there waiting for me. Richard, I had to see you. <laughs> so I'm Richard again, huh? We're back in Paris. I've recovered my lost identity. Please. That unexpected visit isn't by any chance connected with the letters of transit. Richard, we loved each other once. If those days meant anything at all to I you. I wouldn't bring up Paris if I were you. It's poor salesmanship. Richard, if you don't help us, Victor Laszlo will die in Casablanca. What of it? I'm going to die in Casablanca. It's just the spot for it. Now, if you... All right. I tried to reason with you. I tried everything. Now I want those letters. Well, well, get the little lady with the gun. Get those letters. They're right here in my breast pocket. Put them on the table. No, no, you'll have to kill me to get them. If Laszlo and the cause mean so much to you, you won't stop at anything. Go ahead, shoot. You'll be doing me a favor. I... Go on, shoot. I can't. I tried to stay away. I thought that I would never see you again. The day that you left Paris, you don't know how much I went through. Oh, Richard, I loved you so much. I still love you so much. Oh, Richard. My darling. <laughs> my darling. <laughs> See, my darling, my marriage to Victor had always been a secret. Victor was constantly afraid his enemies might come after me if they knew we had been married. He was in a concentration camp for many months. And about a week before I met you, I received word that he was dead. You should have told me all this, Ilse. Yes, I know. But I thought it had nothing to do with you and me. That morning we were going to leave Paris together. I had a phone call from one of Victor's friends. He told me Victor was alive, that he had escaped from the concentration camp, and that he needed me. I couldn't tell you that, Rick. 
You wouldn't have left Paris, and they would have caught you. No. So, I sent you that note, and that's all. Well, it's still a story without an ending, isn't it? No, Rick. Not anymore. I'm going to stay in Casablanca with you, if you want me. You don't have any doubts about that now, do you? No, I mean your hands, Rick. You'll have to think for both of us now. Am I a terrible person to say these things and uh, feel this way? I don't think so, kid. <laughs> you leave everything to me, I'll work things out. You will get Victor out on the plane. Or he'll leave on tonight's plane. You've got to run along now. I, I got to do some thinking. Well, I thought a long time, and I smoked a lot of cigarettes, and I did a lot of walking. And finally, I went to see the prefect of police, my old friend, Captain Renault. Louis, I've come to tell you I got those letters of transit, and I'm using them myself. I'm selling my place and leaving Casablanca on tonight's plane, and I'm taking a friend along with me. One you'll appreciate, Louis, Ilsa Lund. What about Laszlo? Louis, if you could keep Laszlo here and also have a legal reason to arrest him, that would be quite a feather in your cap, wouldn't it? Well, certainly would. All right. You come to my place this evening before the plane leaves, and I'll have Laszlo come there for the letters of transit, and that'll give you criminal grounds to make the arrest, huh? Rick, I'll miss you. Apparently, you're the only one in Casablanca with less scruples than I. Louis, you'll be there? I'll be there. <laughs> Mr. Laszlo, you're under arrest and a charge of accessory to the murder of the courier from whom those letters were stolen. Rick! But I didn't murder him. Hold any. on, Renault. Nobody's going to be arrested, not for a while yet. Are you pointing that gun at me, Rick? Yeah, I sure am. I wouldn't like to shoot you, Louis, but I will if you take one more step. Under the circumstances, I will sit down. At that desk, please. Now, call the airport and tell them there'll be two letters of transit for the Lisbon plane and let them through. And remember, Louis, I've got this gun pointed right at your heart. For that is my least vulnerable spot. Hello, airport? Captain Renault calling from Rick's Cafe. There will be two letters of... Captain Renault outsmarted me there. Instead of dialing the airport, he dialed the German consulate, and they were on the way to the airport almost as soon as we were. It was a foggy night at the airport, and Ilsa and Victor Laszlo and Renault and I stood there listening to the plane warming up. And every one of us, I think, was praying... I kept my eyes on Renault and my gun in my pocket. Nilsa kept her eyes on me and finally asked the question I'd been waiting for. Rick, you've given me a letter of transit, too. I don't need it, Rick. Yes, you do. In ten minutes, you'll be off on that plane, too. Richard, what's happened to you? Last night, we well, said... we said a good many things last night. I think your husband should know some of them. Monsieur Rick, I do not ask you to explain Well, anything. I'm going to anyway. Might make a difference to you later. You know about Ilsa and me in Paris when you were... Yes. And you also knew she came to see me last night... Yes, I know that, too. She came for the letters. That's true, isn't it, Ilsa? Yes, but she I... She tried everything to get them. And when nothing else worked, she did her best to convince me she was still in love with me. For your sake, she pretended, and I let her pretend. Richard. She even offered to stay here in Casablanca with me if I'd get you out. That was a heroic gesture, but not very practical. The concentration camp was about all we had to look forward to after we'd helped you escape. Is that right, Louis? I'm afraid Captain Strasser would insist on that. Chivalry is dead, along with many other things. So that's how it stands. You better go get on your plane. It's just about ready to go. You see, the other passengers are getting on. Rick, Rick. Goodbye, Rick. And thank you. So long. Good luck. Goodbye, Rick. Laszlo and Nilsson went across the field to the plane, and Renault and I stood there measuring one another, and we heard the plane door slam, and then a car came screeching to a stop. Renault! Oh, it's you, Captain Strasser. Renault, what was the meaning of that phone call? Victor Laszlo's on that plane for Lisbon. What? Why do you stand there? Why don't you stop them before they take off? Hey, stop! Shut up, Strasser! Don't make a move unless you want to get shot. I'm a true neutral, Strasser. I was willing to shoot Captain Renault, and I'm willing to shoot you. You fool. If you think I'm going to stand here and let that plane take off. Man, shut up. Man, stop that plane. Stop. Oh. I always had a feeling you were a good shot, Rick. Right through Strasser's heart. There she goes. Happy landing, sweetheart. Well, Renault, 
What happens now? Well, I think you and I will go over to your place and have a drink. Huh? I'll call my office and tell them we stumbled over Captain Strauss's body in the fog. And uh, to round up the usual suspects. Okay, Louis. Thanks. But by the way, you still owe me 5,000 francs on that bet of ours. Laszlo did escape. I think we might call that debt Pedrick. <laughs> okay, Louis. We'll call that debt paid. Let's go back to the cafe. And may us have its made that no. Here you are, Louis. The champagne's on me. Say that, sir. It's a great tune, isn't it? It uh, sort of gets you inside. Uh, you didn't fool that girl tonight, Rick. And you didn't fool me. You're a rank sentimentalist. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I am, Louis. Sing the song, Sam. Sing the song. As time goes A certain hero who would be embarrassed to hear his name broadcast was told he could come home on leave. The Treasury Department said they'd like him to sell war bonds. All he'd have to do would be to stand up in a booth and tell the public why they should buy bonds. I don't want to come home for that, he replied. If they don't know why, I can't tell them. Ladies and gentlemen, you can understand his feelings, I know. And of course, we all know why we should buy bonds. But what many of us don't realize is the terrific and mounting cost of winning the war. Yes, we're going to win, but we'll have to pay the price in blood and lives and money. We're asked merely for money. We're not asked to give. We're asked to lend. And for the lending, we receive a fine profit. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, how can you lose? Buy that bond, won't you, before another sun sets. Buy war bonds for yourself. Give the present with the future. Buy war bonds for Christmas. This program was presented in cooperation with the drug, cosmetic, and allied industries by the Colgate Palmolive Peat Company on behalf of the Treasury's war bond campaign. Tonight's theater of romance play was adapted from the memorable film Casablanca, produced by Warner Brothers, whose latest motion picture, Hollywood Canteen, is now playing at the Strand, New York, and will soon be seen throughout the country. Next week, we will bring you a special holiday program, The Messiah, based on the music of the oratorio and on incidents in the life of George Frederick Handel, the composer. Until next Tuesday, when Colgate Tooth Powder's theater of romance will bring you The Messiah, this is your host saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, and romance. Victor Jory, who played Rick in tonight's play, appears through the courtesy of Vix and is heard on CBS every Sunday afternoon as the star of Vix Matinee Theater. Dooley Wilson recreated his original role of Sam. Mercedes McCambridge played Ilsa, and Santos Ortega played Renault. Casablanca was especially adapted for this program by Gene Holloway. The music was composed and conducted by Ben Ludlow. And the entire production was directed by Mark Sloeb. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.